Hello Floss Tube, this is Stasha and I have a different setup today so we're hoping that it works. Um, I have to be really careful this time because I actually have a time limit based on hardware. So starting first with finishes. I found that spinning the wheel of decision works. I may have fallen off my rotation plans for the year, but I've actually gotten quite a few things done. So A&G did the uh, <clears throat> Florentine Heart, and I last last video I showed you my completed autumn rays, Florentine autumn rays or autumn leaves, one of those Florentine Heart. Well, I completed a second one. Here's my second Florentine Heart. This one was done using tanzanite as the base watercolor, and then I had I had this light blue. I had this dark blue, the three mid, mid blues, the three mid ranges, and as I was looking at that I thought, you know what, it's just going to blur. It's got to have something to make it pop. So luckily I had a number three pearl, uh, number, these are fives, I had a number five pearl in white, B5200, so I added the white. And so we have the Tanzanite Florentine Heart. Now the fun thing is, is that I have three kids. I don't have another watercolors kitted up. So uh, we'll see what happens next year. I don't have a really good source of number five pearl cotton locally anymore. So, the other thing I finished was Heart and Hands Thanksgiving Medley. This is what I this is the one I bought up at Shepherd's Bush. I bought it up at Shepherd's Bush. I don't know if this one's hard because I can't see myself in the camera. So I'm hoping I get the whole thing for you so that you can see it. If I hold it this way, can you see it? go slowly up. So this is on 12 count jute. Natural. Ah. I hate it when my nose itches while I'm filming. So, But a lot of other people have their nose itch while they're filming so I'm not worried about it. So this is, the fabric is 12 count natural jute and when you do it over two that ends up being six, six stitches to the, to the inch. And I'm using number three pearl cotton on that. So the back stitching is done in number 12 pearl cotton. Because you can't strand pearl cotton. Well, you could, but it'd be messy. Don't even try. So anyway, um, heart and hand. Finish this, this. I am going to make this into a bell pull. And believe it or not, with all the fabrics I have here, I don't have any Thanksgiving or autumn flavored fabric. So I do, however, have a tablecloth for a table that I no longer own that may become the back to this fabric, to this bell pull. I also have an October table run, a uh, Thanksgiving table runner that I don't have the sideboard that it used to go on anymore. And my husband's like, can we get rid of these? We don't have we don't have the furniture that these went on. So I may use I may just mount mount this on the table runner and then figure out how to make it into a bell pill from there. Or I may use the, the uh, tablecloth as the backing. Hopefully by the next time I do a video for you this will be completely F out of mode. And you can see whether I use the tablecloth the bell pull, the, the, the tablecloth, the table runner, or if I went out and bought something new. So that leaves us with Thanksgiving medley. I can give you my notes on what I did on this because since I used number three pearl cotton and the original pattern was done on 32 count summer khaki Belfast using gentle art threads. Nose is still itching. You can either do it as charted, 
or I can send you what was remaining of my threads and just pass the stash along. So, if you would like to be in the drawing for this for Thanksgiving medley, if you will say either with threads or without threads in your comment, I will put you in the drawing for Thanksgiving medley and then I'll either send you my threads if you said with threads or I'll just send you the pattern if you say without threads. So either way, that's up for go up to go. <clears throat> so I've been using the decision wheel and I've kind of scheduled my wheel a little bit differently. I've got my whips on one wheel and I've got everything that's kitted and can be started on a second wheel. So I have two slots saying new start on the on my wheel of decision. And Tanz the Tanzanite Heart actually came up as one of as I got the new start slot and I got the Tanzanite Heart, so that was an in and out, real easy. So one of the things that came up was Rose Fairy. And when 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 I when I get a piece that comes up. I pick a section of the pattern that is, I will work until that's done. On Rose Fairy, I was just going to complete one row, and then it, I finished it all the first day. So I added a second row. So we've got the second row in. And then somebody asked me, how do I restart? So I'm not, it'd be easy, it's easy enough to restart here because all I'd have to do is find, see this blank spot right here? I just have to find that at the pattern, and that's where I start. I'm going to show you better on Dragon Ride, though. So Dragon Ride came up, and this is how far I've, uh, I am on, oh, Rose Fairy was Joan Elliott. Dragon Ride is Teresa Wentzler. Now, the next time I pick this up to work on it, see how I've got this gold, these gold stitches right here? I know that the next empty stitch is right under those gold stitches. So I will go to the pattern, I will find those gold stitches on the pattern, which is easy to do because I've marked it. So I will go to the first unmarked spot, which will be right there. I will pull that color, and then I will stitch all of that color in that area. And keep going until I'm all out of that color. So. But that will also tell me which square I'm in, and I'll just work that square until I go around to his head. Either that, or in this case, I'll probably start up here by his head and work my way down this way. And you can start to see where the over one for the rider is going to be. He's starting to show up there. So I also have a slot on my wheel that is closest to done. This piece is the percentage of closest to done. Dragonite probably has fewer stitches to go, but uh, not going to happen because Dragonite is my travel piece, and yes, I could finish it in a night, but then what would I work on in the airplane? So speaking of airplanes, I am grounded for the rest of this quarter. I, I am done with travel for the year. I will be at home. For the rest of the year and because I'm not seeing customers and not seeing clients I can do fun things with my hair. So we went with purple. It took my hairdresser quite a bit because my hair my hair just really wanted to stay red and there's still a red patch back here. But uh, it just didn't want to go purple. But we finally got it there and I'm happy with it and my family's absolute my extended family is absolutely shocked and dismayed. My kids all love it. So last week, the other thing that came up on, the, on my wheel was class schedule. So we have now got the title across the top finished and potions class is finished. Now, there were a lot of people that when class schedule started coming out were going, oh, but it's not Harry, it's not Harry Potter enough. Let me talk to you about licensing. You know, we talk so much 
about protecting our designers' copyrights. We talk about protecting the intellectual property of designers. Well, you know what? If we're doing that, then designers also need to protect the intellectual copyrights and intellectual property of our fandoms. Fandom and Stitches, that's why they give away all their stuff. They don't want to even tread on that licensing line. They don't want to step on it. I have problems with Etsy shops that do copies of Disney stuff. Disney licenses their products to certain, to certain designers. And if you're not one of those designers, you're kind of breaking the law. You are stealing intellectual property. So anyway, that is my lecture for today. So class schedule, not nowhere does it say that this is related to Harry Potter. There's nothing in the advertising that says this is a Hogwarts class schedule. So you know what? It's your own head. So, you know, just, it's, it's, it's not licensed to that author. The designer did not have a license, and by the way, the designer happens to be married to an intellectual property attorney. So she, trust me, she knows exactly where that line is. So for those of you that complained that it wasn't Harry Potter enough, guess what? It never said it was. So there's my class schedule. I added beads for the steam on my potion, and I added some Krennic in, in my potions bottles, so they're probably doesn't show up shiny in, in the pictures, but it's shiny. We'll see what happens the next time this one comes up. I don't know if I'm going to use the decision wheel come January, because I have been thinking about doing Year of Whips, and if I do Year of Whips, then I need to have, I need to be back on a schedule like I was the first part of last year, which I fell off my schedule when I started traveling. So I've got to figure out Come January, I've been told, <laughs> you're going to be gone every week, honey. So I've got to figure out what I can do just on the weekends. And that's got to be my stitching goals. So one of the other things that came up is I was putting floss away. And for those of us that were around for the 1996 DMC color change, Remember this? <laughs> this is 370. This is old 370 and this is new 370. Do those even look like the same floss color? No, they don't. This looks brown, this looks green. That's still 370. So if you have older patterns that say 370, 371, or 372, or 373, Anything prior to 1996, they're looking for a brown. Anything after 1996, it's probably a green. <clears throat> the other colors that were really, really affected by the color change were the grays. DMC has next to no good gray anymore. So that's when I switched to anchor. And a lot of my stitching is done with anchor now. All of my Mirabilia Queens, I converted to Anchor. My, D my Carousel Horses from Therese Wensler, those are all Anchor. It also helps that when you're taking a blended thread and you, have to, you only have one strand to use on 40 count, an Anchor conversion helps because there are some of the Anchor threads that are closer to a blended DMC. So anyway, one of the other things that happened this, this month last couple weeks is we have been cleaning some things out and one of the things I was cleaning out were some boxes I got from my grandmother's house and I want to show you this I don't know if I can get close enough for you to see that that is cross stitch on a handkerchief it just that just absolutely amazes me I don't know if I'm close enough that you can even see that I don't know how it's focusing but that is, I don't even know if that's 50 count. It's definitely more than 40. But, oh, I'm, I mean, even, there's the back. My grandma, my mama always said, I called my grandma mama. 
Mama always said, be careful who you show your backs to. Think of them like underwear. You'd never show, show your underwear to everyone, neither should your backs. So everyone, think of your backs like underwear, be careful who you show them to. But I was just absolutely amazed to find that, that that's something she had stitched, either she or my great grandmother had stitched that on that handkerchief. Absolutely amazing. The other one is I found this, this Irish linen handkerchief. It's got the Irish linen label, but this, this lace pattern, this is one that, that Mama stitched on everything. I've got pillowcases, I've got a bunch of things with this, this lace design on it. So I'm pretty sure that she bought an Irish, an Irish linen handkerchief and then stitched the edges. And my crochet is nowhere near as, as good as this. But uh, I could probably copy this pattern. Looks like it's mainly just triple crochet with a couple chains. Yeah, it's easy enough one. I also found this wood hoop. Notice there is nothing on the outer hoop to tighten it with. I'm thinking I'll probably end up using that as a frame somewhere. I don't know if I, if I dare use it for my st stitching. The other thing I found, 1970s Afghan patterns. Crochet and knit. And there's one here that you cross stitch on top of your knitted Afghan. It's got the, it's got the cross stitch patterns in it too. It just talks, it tells you colors, no numbers, but it was published by J.P. Coates. Florentine Flame. That one's a popcorn stitch. That's just granny squares. But that is just so cute! And then the other thing, Coates and Clark, book number 170B, Learn How To Book. E is for embroidery, T is for tatting, K is for knitting, C is for crochet. And 35 cents for a pattern book, guys. And it has crochet, knitting, tatting, embroidery, and index. It's got instructions on how to crochet. Right there. And then it's got some patterns how to single and double crochet a placemat. This one was published in 1959, guys. Crocheting a doily. Filet edging. Knitting notes, casting on, casting off. How to do a yarn over. I'm sorry, the knitting stuff makes no sense to me. Uh, my mama tried to teach me how to knit. I'm left-handed. She is right-handed. Was right-handed. Finally, she turned to me and said, Stasha, dear, your sisters need something they can do better than you. And that's where we left knitting. And I have never learned, I've never even tried to pick it up since there. But hey, it's got instructions on how to turn, turn, the, turn the heel of the sock in here and how to, how to make a buttonhole while, while knitting. And a, a, they have a cardigan and mittens patterns in here. So then they've got tatting, which is one that I wouldn't mind learning, but I never got around to it. So I have no haul. Let's see, I've done how to pick up a ro rotation piece. I have no haul. Okay, one of the other things I found when I was cleaning things out, I have this neat little project bag. It's, it's good for a small project. It's a tea set. Really cute. But I don't use these kind of project bags. Uh, I think it was a gift from someone. And I'm sorry if I don't remember who sent it to me. But uh, if you would like this project bag, just put the word bag in your comment somewhere. So be clever, work it in. 
So this project bag is, is going to go along with heart, the heart and hand. So the, the Wheel of Decisions said that I should work on the Doctor Who quilt this week. This is the Doctor Who quilt. I was mentioning fandom and stitches and how they, they do things that are fandom related but they don't charge for them. They give the patterns away free. I was working on this center block, the TARDIS block, when I volunteered for the very first Salt Lake City Fan X. And I got to work with Simon Fisher Becker, who was Dorian, the big blue head from Doctor Who. And I had brought this in to work on during our breaks. And he absolutely loved the block, and then he signed it. So he signed right there, right there, and I stitched over it. And then the next Fan X, there really weren't any Doctor Who guests. There were a lot of Star Trek guests. But Jeremy Bullock, who was there for Star Wars, not Star Trek, because he does a lot of the Jedi choreography in that. Um, his wife was looking at my Doctor Who quilt. I don't remember why I had it with me, but she turns around and says, Jeremy, darling, weren't you in Doctor Who? He goes, oh yes, I was Hal the Archer. She says, well, then you need to sign this piece of art. And so Jeremy Bullock signed next to doctor, doctor number three, because that is the doctor that he was Hal the Archer on. Well, it just kind of went from there. The next time around, I was working with Colin Baker and Paul McGann, and they signed it. And Eve Miles was there, and she signed. And she told me, this is a, this is a heart, not a bomb, dear. It's a heart, not a bomb. And you'll notice I have embroidered over the signatures. I have fallen behind on finishing the embroider, embroidery. It's been a couple of years since Peter Davison was here. Now he was here in 2017. It's only a year. And then Jenna Coleman, she was the only one who could sign doctor, doctor number one. Last September, I got Mark Shepard, and of course, Alex Kingston signed the heart of the quilt, which is the very center. In September, David Tennant came to Salt, to Salt Lake City Fan X. Well, I had figured he was never going to come, so Catherine Tate had signed the 10 block, because I figured that's the closest I was going to get. So David Tennant looked at it and he says, where's my spot? And I'm sorry, he, Patrick Stewart and David Tennant were the only two times I've gotten totally starstruck. So anyway, I said, oh, you were supposed to sign here, but Catherine Tate took your spot. David Tennant just puts the pen down and says, of course she did. He said, well, she signed in silver, I'll sign in gold. So he signed his block in gold. So I have quite a bit of work to do to get caught up. And here we are, it's Wednesday, and I have not even started working on this. But Peter Davison is where I'm starting, because that's where I left off. And somebody wanted to know, how do you embroider an autograph? You have that nice line there. When you do embroidery, you do a, a lot of times for a, a straight line, you'll do a stem stitch. So that's all I'm doing here is I'm using a number eight pearl cotton and doing a stem stitch. And it's embroidery, so you're using a sharp. I usually have a thimble. So I will finish doing Peter Davison. The dot over the eye will be a French knot. And then once I finish Peter Davison, I will go back and do Jenna Coleman in Akrenic Gold. I, I'm one of those really weird people that prefer Krennic over Petite Treasure Braid. Just absolutely have never liked Petite Treasure Braid. So that'll be Akrenic number four over Jenna Coleman. And then we'll do Mark Shepard 
Alex Kingston, Catherine Tate, David Tennant, and Matt Smith. And then I will be all caught up and ready to put my borders on. Right? I, am I missing anybody? Let's face it, the only way that I'm going to get Tom Baker is, is, is if I fly to England for one of the Doctor Who events over there. Because he does not leave England. So that, that, that's become the unicorn signature on here. But, there's Barrowman. So anyway, that's where I am on the Doctor Who quilt. There's the silver for Catherine Tate. There's the gold for David Tennant and Jenna Coleman. There's my number eight pearl that I'm using for everybody else. And that is everything I have today. And I'm hoping that I'm within minutes of finishing this. Because like I mentioned, I usually film with my tablet. Today, my husband has brought up a camera and we're actually doing film on a camera and he gave me a timer, but the screen has gone blank so I have no idea <laughs> if I've if I've hit this so uh, normally I like to do live and just go live but we'll probably be editing today I'll try and leave as much live as I can but we're gonna have to edit the end so was there anything else I was gonna tell you um if anybody knows of any good Stitch alongs for next year, let me know. Um, I haven't really signed up for any, bec any because I'm thinking year of whips, I need to get things finished, and I did not. You saw class schedule. I got as far as February. Um, fabulous Women from 2017. I'm still in March. Uh, Into the Jungle from Frosted Pumpkin. I started May. Haven't finished it. Plus, I am going to be on the road so much next year that it'll be interesting to see what I can take with me. Um, class schedule can travel. Pretty sure um, I could. I'm pretty sure I could travel with uh, fabulous women. But the, I've got, I've got into the jungle up on on bars, on needlepoint bars. So that's not going to travel well. But I could work on it on the weekends. We'll see what happens. So anyway, remember the two giveaways for, for Thanksgiving medley from Heart and Hand. Just say either with floss, well, either, either with threads or without threads because it's pearl cotton. Pearl, by the way, is spelled P-E-R-L-E. -E. It has to do with the way the thread is twisted. It is a pearled thread. It's a manufacturing process, not a sheen. P-E-A-R-L is a gemstone. It is not a thread. So P-E-R-L-E. -E, I will give you my pearl cottons. P-E-R-L-E. -E, if you say with threads. And if you say without threads, you'll be in the drawing for the pattern alone. And you can do it the way Heart and Hand did it on their, on their pattern. And then just mention bag to be in the drawing for the bag. Everyone in the U.S. Have a great Thanksgiving. For the rest of you, have a fabulous Thursday. And for those in Canada, your Thanksgiving was a month ago. Hope you enjoyed it. Everyone, have a great weekend. And remember, pattern is just a place to start. Make it your own. Customize it. Bye!